Deputy Speaker, I too rise to um, speak to the Rail Amendment Bill, the Rail Safety National Law Amendment Bill of 2019. Um, I will, unlike the member for Norunga, um, traverse some of the uh, some of the, uh, the the pertinent parts of the legislation. The opportunity to talk about, uh, in particular, what constitutes a urine test or not, uh, is one that I find. Uh, irresistible, notwithstanding the fact that uh, lots of other people have doubtless uh, covered it already. Um, the bill covers drug and alcohol testing. It, uh, it enables exceptions to release documents under the Freedom of Information Act, and uh, it also implements some, uh, some notionally routine amendments to the national law. Uh, before, traversing, um, before traversing those points, um, it uh, it is also irresistible, uh, from my perspective, to, uh, to consider the impact that this bill will have on the seat of Davenport. And uh, the answer is absolutely zero. Could we get a train? Well, I'm, I'm, well I'm, I'm, I'm glad the member for Finnis, the member for Finnis has, the member for Finnis has uh, played the game Robodope style and said, until you get a train. And we will be getting a train. Um, I am delighted uh, that at the prospect and in particular look forward to the, uh, the actuality of the Flinders Railway Station, which, uh, which is uh, currently under construction as part of the, uh, part of the massive Darlington works. And uh, as a direct result, the seat of Davenport will once again have a train station. And in this particular case, not just any train station, but a station which um, will be the hub um, for the Flinders precinct. Um, the uh, Flinders University has conducted uh, research, uh, I think uh, Deloitte conducted the research for them, and they anticipate um, somewhere in the vicinity of, uh, of some $2 billion worth of value um, being, uh, being attracted to that precinct um, by, way of, uh, by way of investments in, in uh, accommodation, hotels uh, and the like. And uh, that, that rail hub um, will have um, tremendous impacts uh, for not just Flinders but for the whole of the electorate, which I propose uh, to cover. By way of, um, by way of history lesson, uh, there's been a few today, um, there was in fact a Happy Valley railway station. Uh, people might be interested to know, I suspect uh, less so, but if you, you do live in the south, and in particular the seat of Davenport, it's my strong contention. Um, Davenport is extremely poorly served with public transport. Uh, the people of the, uh, the seat, the area, the area in which I live, have uh, extraordinarily poor public transport options. And as a result of that, uh, most of them elect to drive with consequent uh, lo loads on the, the local roads, um, not to mention expense, aggravation, etc. So, Happy Valley actually had a train station open in 1915. Uh, it was closed in 1969. It was part of the, uh, the Hallett Cove to Wollonga Line, um, which traversed uh, from Hallett Cove down through Happy Valley uh, and McLaren Vale all the way to, to Wollonga. Um, as I said, the, uh, the seat of Davenport is, in my view, and the view of many people um, in the area, uh, poorly served. The Flinders Rail rail station um, um, will provide, as I said, not just, a, not just an opportunity for uh, students and or other users of, uh, uh, of the Fl Flinders precinct, uh, the opportunity to travel uh, from anyway, anywhere from Adelaide uh, down through, down through uh, um, southern Adelaide to, uh, to Flinders. Um, but it will also potentially provide the people of the southern suburbs with a, with a, a hub from which, um, provided the appropriate infrastructure is in place um, by way of bus services and their interchange with the railway station, uh, will have an enormous transformative impact. Um, the, the practical reality is that um, if you are a public transport user in um, leaving, for example, the, uh, the, uh, the bus 
the bus, I hesitate to use the word uh, station or terminus, it's, uh, it's simply a glorified bus stop, a park and ride uh, in, uh, in Aberfoyle Park. Depending on what time of the day uh, you leave and whether or not you, you derive a, um, an express service, um, you are condemned to, um, a, a, condemned to a trip um, which, in a roundabout way, will take uh, well in excess of an hour. the bells. Uh, thank you, Mr. Acting Speaker. Um, can I thank the member for Elizabeth uh, too for um, ensuring the House has quorum and, as a result, as many people as possible are, uh, are present in, in person to, uh, um, to hear me uh, elucidate on the public transport woes of the, uh, the southern seat of Davenport mm -hmm. and how they'll be, uh, they'll be changed by the advent of a train which, um, to quote the, uh, the member for Finnis just now, is not far in Davenport, but there again, it doesn't have to be. Yeah. Uh, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, um, the, um, the practical reality for um, public transport users in my seat is that in order to get to uh, the city centre, either for employment or for, uh, for study purposes, um, they are more often than not sentenced to use um, bus services which take well in, in, in excess of an hour um, to arrive in the city. The difference, however, is that um, with the advent of the, the Flinders railway station, the, expect the not unreasonable expectation is that travel times from Flinders to the city um, of 30 minutes um, are, are not an unreasonable expectation or in fact less than 30 minutes given that uh, um, a further 900 metres further north on the line then when one derives a, a train uh, from Tonsley into the city that that's usually uh, 18 to 19 minutes. The practical reality is that a bus, uh, buses are scheduled from Everfall Park to Flinders um, to travel anywhere from 12 to 13 minutes. The practical reality is that um, a bus service connecting uh, my constituents in the south with the Flinders railway station whence, once it's, uh, it's in the seat of Davenport and is uh, installed at Flinders should, as a practical measure, enable, enable people uh, from the south to travel to the city um, in roughly 30 minutes' time, thereby cutting in half uh, the travel time, not to mention in so doing removing cars from the road and, uh, and also removing the need for buses from um, Flinders north into the city itself. Now, this is a practical, a practical reality, a practical outcome, uh, which will be possible as a result of the advent of rail um, uh, coming back to the seat of, to the seat of Davenport. Uh, concurrent, uh, concurrent with that reality, once, once the rail station's open, um, concurrent with that is the need for a variety of reasons uh, for additional park and ride facilities in and around the southern area. Um, I'm on record and 
I'm delighted to take, again, take this opportunity to, uh, to further uh, reiterate uh, the need for more park and ride facilities in the southern parts uh, of Adelaide and in particular in my electorate. Uh, the member for Carvel, uh, there, for, by way of example, um, rejoices in there being, um, if my recollection serves me correctly, um, in excess of some 700 park and ride um, parking spots in Mount Barker. And I note that um, if only we could be so fortunate, as the uh, member for Heysen so eloquently uh, um, mentions in an aside. Uh, and whilst I'm delighted for the people in the northern parts of Adelaide, in particular in and around uh, Tea Tree Gully, given the, uh, the hundreds and hundreds, and in some cases thousands of park and ride spots being constructed for them, I'd make the point that uh, a similar distance south of the city of Adelaide in and around my, my electorate, some 20 odd kilometres south of the CBD. Um, I rejoice in sharing uh, some 196 uh, park and ride spots at two facilities, uh, one of which is wholly in the seat of Davenport and the other, other of which is on the border uh, with the seats of Hurtle Vale and, uh, and Black. Uh, there are, to put it bluntly, far too few park and ride facilities in the south and we therefore cannot be surprised when uh, patronage of public transport options in the south um, is less than what is desirable or optimal, um, given particularly the, uh, the increasing cost of uh, fuel registration, etc. It is a major issue for people in the south. The advent of rail to the seat of Davenport by virtue of uh, the Flinders railway station being open should enable the provision of cheap park and ride facilities in land which is already vacant in and around uh, those, those electorates in those areas and, uh, and a hub and spoke approach to providing, um, to providing public transport, not just, to the, uh, not just to the CBD area, but um, equally um, having the Flinders, the Flinders precinct as a destination or indeed the Marion, the Marion shopping centre. So the, uh, the, the proposition I have advanced in the past and will uh, uh, continue to advance um, uh, with the minister and indeed with any, with any, uh, any, any potential uh, stakeholders and or people who, uh, who have some interest in the matter is that uh, there should be um, literally hundreds more park and ride spots um, in, in or around uh, the Windybanks Road area of my electorate, in and around uh, Flagstaff Hill, um, and additionally uh, uh, off uh, further, to the, uh, further to the east, uh, um, off, just off the uh, former dump area, just off uh, Shepherd's Hill Road, and indeed there are, uh, there are additional capabilities um, with land that uh, is, approximate, is proximate to um, the Glenthorne National Park. So these park and ride areas should, uh, were they to be implemented, provide uh, readily accessible, cheap uh, and plentiful um, car parking options, which were they served by, uh, by small, small bus services running on a frequent basis, dropping, uh, dropping patrons to the Flinders Rail or the Flinders Precinct, they wish to uh, conduct business at Flinders, study, seek medical attention, etc. They can, um, should they wish to proceed by train to the city for work or study or other reasons, they can, or they, they can indeed uh, be, be transported back um, via loop uh, through, the Marian, uh, through the Marian Shopping Centre precinct. These, this is a reality, and in all seriousness, it is, uh, uh, it is something that, that is high time. And in that context, it's, uh, it, it is uh, great to, be, great to, uh, to have the prospect uh, at hand of, uh, of having rail transfer and all the, uh, the advantages that it brings uh, become a reality to uh, my part of the southern parts of, uh, of Adelaide, which, as I said, I unashamedly, um, unashamedly propagate the view um, are poorly served by, by public transport. Um, more by, um, it must be said, not, I, I suspect it's less deliberately as opposed to simply being overlooked, but um, 
I, my intention is certainly to, uh, to advocate and advocate uh, aggressively for a change uh, in that, given the, uh, the opportunity that uh, the Flinders Railway Station uh, will provide to the, to the area. Now, I touched on brief, briefly the, um, the, the prerequisite for um, the prerequisite for this to be to, to be successful of um, proper integration with that rail station uh, with bus services. Now, that, that seems a self-evident um, self-evident proposition, but um, the practical reality is that. Uh, that may not necessarily be the case. There are lots and lots of, if I can put it uh, this way, uh, moving parts, lots of government departments, lots of entities involved. Um, the practical reality is that for this to work and for uh, reasonable public transport options to be finally delivered to the people uh, in my electorate in particular, but in um, neighbouring electorates as well, there has to be consideration for integration of the bus services um, with the rail hub at Flinders and, uh, and I'd urge all of the, uh, the ministers and departments involved who have been working on this to make it a reality uh, to keep up the good work and to ensure that we have a practical and workable solution which is robust enough to serve not only the immediate needs of the area but as in particular as we all hope as patronage levels increase in, in concert with or as a result of the um, the increased amenity that um, um, effectively halving the, the, the transport time uh, taken to get into the city will, uh, will enable as the patronage rates increase and therefore as the, uh, um, the, rate, of, uh, the rate of passenger take up from or for the area increases, uh, we need to ensure that we have adequate infrastructure in and around that railway station. As I said, it's, it seems and sounds self-evident, um, but the practical realities are that um, uh, there's, there are inevitable temptations to scrimp on that. Uh, some, of the, some of the planning documents I've seen, uh, particularly my, uh, uh, my work on the Public Works Committee, um, are, um, are somewhat in underwhelming to say the least with people being dropped off on or around at the side of South Road and expected to traipse uh, some 400 metres uh, to the railway station. Um, uh, were we to implement that, then I think that would be scandalously stupid, um, to state it, state it mildly, but also would, uh, um, but also would, would as a result, um, be self, self, a self-fulfilling prophecy in that uh, you'd have very, very few people using it. So, great news um, that it is that uh, rail is returning to Davenport the practical reality is that we need to ensure we provide the appropriate levels of infrastructure to support the use of rail. Otherwise, we'll end up with a situation that we had in 1969 where um, the railway station was closed, the rail line itself was torn up in 1972, and we now have a, an extensive uh, walking trail um, and or bike trail all the way from, uh, from Hallett Cove and in particular from Happy Valley down through Ranella as far as Wollonga. So to reiterate, the, the prerequisites are we must make it as attractive as possible and as easy as possible for people to use rail transport, in this case the, uh, the railway station in Flinders. And in order to do that, um, by far and away the, uh, the best bet and the easiest, the easiest uh, methodology is to provide um, park and ride facilities, lots more of them, in areas, uh, in areas which um, which enable the local population to, e to easily access them, but which have the added advantage of being uh, uh, built on land, which is, uh, which is already vacant by virtue of the fact it's under high, high power line, high, uh, high power or high tension uh, power lines, or it's built on the side of a former dump, uh, etc. So there, there are options uh, open to, uh, uh, to facilitate um, that, that sort of take up I've described. And, um, and it's, it's important for um, the future of public transport that, they, that those options are explored. Now, I should point out that one of the, uh, one of the other attractions or, or one of the other impacts of, um, of that type of investment um, will, will not just be the, uh, the use by, um, 
the resident community of the, uh, the southern parts of Adelaide, and in particular the, uh, the constituents I have in the seat of Davenport, um, using the rail system uh, to, uh, uh, to go out their business in the, uh, in the Adelaide CBD or, or, or indeed in pl at places uh, en route from Flinders to the CBD. But of course, the, it also provides um, our area with the capacity um, to service incoming um, incoming visitors to the area, which is, uh, is a not unreasonable prospect uh, given the advent of, uh, of the investment in, uh, in the Glenthorne National, National Park. Now, Glenthorne Farm is a, is a reality, reality today. We are, as a government, we went to the election uh, last year promising to bring about the, the reality of uh, South Australia's uh, second uh, national park. And uh, I'm delighted to, uh, delighted to reiterate in this context that, um, that that's a reality. The practicality of the use of the enhanced use of, of, uh, of rail transport into the seat of Davenport, in particular through the, uh, the advent of the Flinders Rail Station and the, the hub and spoke approach I've talked about, is that that then provides a ready-made means whereby visitors to Glenthorne uh, can very easily traverse the area using public transport, failing which the only option, the only practical options are. Um, in particular, the use of the motor, the, uh, the motor vehicle, which, uh, in, in many respects, uh, runs runs counter to the objective uh, that we have insofar as uh, um, the re-establishment of a wild and prist uh, well, pristine or semi-pristine environment in Glenthorne itself is concerned. Uh, Mr. Acting Speaker, I regret I didn't have time to uh, uh, to cover off uh, the rail amendments uh, uh, urine test. Uh, um, provisions, but nonetheless uh, am delighted to have the opportunity to talk uh, about the advent of rail back to Davenport. Thank you. Uh, the